The many degrees of freedom of snake robots allow them to navigate a wide range of environments. The main objective of our project was to explore rolling as a possible method of locomotion for snake robots. The robot consists of nine servos and one sensor module linked together in series. The axis of rotation of all the joints are parallel to each other, so even though the robot has nine degrees of freedom, they are redundant, so the robot has limited configurations. The method of rolling involves curling the robot into three possible shapes. The robot moves by transitioning between two different shapes. For example, the robot shape shifts between the middle and forward configuration to move forward. The purpose of having this half-step shape is to help the robot get over obstacles and to keep the center of gravity of the robot at approximately the same height. Without this intermediate half-step shape, the robot CG will bounce up and down. The rolling method of locomotion was compared to a worm style of locomotion. For the worm method, curves were moved down the snake's body in sequence to move the robot forward or backward. The rolling and worm methods of locomotion were compared in a series of tests. On flat ground, rolling proved to be faster while consuming about the same power as the worm method. Rolling also allowed the robot to travel up steeper inclines than the worm. Here, the robot gets stuck while trying to worm itself up an incline. When the robot switches to rolling, it is easily able to climb the hill. So easy. Not even trying. No. However, the worm technique performed much better when going under and over certain obstacles. It's gonna try and go over it, right? It's gonna go no, right it's just through gonna it. it. <laughs> it's just gonna fuck it. Another challenge we faced was initializing the robot into a flat position without self-collisions. Given any initial configuration of the robot, we wanted to intelligently unravel it into a flat configuration. Our first approach was to try and create a general path planning and tracking algorithm that could change the robot's configuration into any other configuration. We realized that the 9 degrees of freedom of the robot meant that it would have to do path planning and tracking in 9 dimensions. A 9-dimensional collision matrix was created to determine safe configurations. Here's an example of a 3-dimensional collision matrix with for a 3-joint, 4-link robot. Because of time constraints, a simpler unraveling algorithm was used to flatten the robot. The algorithm involved internally simulating the movement of each joint one time step in the future and checking whether a self-collision occurred or not. Joints that wouldn't cause a collision will be moved slightly and the process will be repeated until no future collisions were detected. Visualization tools were developed to help understand the robot's shape and movement in terms of the joint angles. Based on the joint angles, we constructed a model of the robot's skeleton and body. This model could be used for things such as detecting self-collisions. To help visualize the internal movement of the snake robot, a virtual chassis was used. This involved computing the CG and principal moments of inertia to create a transformation matrix which could be applied to the entire robot. Even the complex motion of the worm can be visualized in an intuitive way when the virtual chassis is applied. 